The UFC is now having to pay over $300 million in a class action lawsuit to fighters. To understand this, we have to go back about 10 years, back in December 2014, where the first class action antitrust complaint is filed on behalf of Kung Lee, Nate Quarry, and John Fitch in the Northern District of California, with the core accusation being that the UFC was starting a monopoly blocking fighters from getting other opportunities and overall violating antitrust laws. Now, basically, to summarize these antitrust laws, these things focus on companies, you know, taking advantage of monopolization and anti-competitive practices. But this means using unfair tactics like buying out other companies so that the fighters don't have as many options to leverage pay. Now, the UFC has notably done this before, right? We know the UFC has bought different companies like Strike Force, like Pride, like WEC. And because of them doing this in the early days, this led fighters to really only having one option, fighting in the UFC as a major promotion. Like, that was the only way that they were going to be able to make a living was going to them, which means the UFC could set whatever pay they want, whatever rules they want. Basically, the fighters have no choice but to follow whatever rules the UFC put in place. It even got to the point where the UFC was taking away fighter sponsors, right? If you guys recall back then, fighters used to be able to wear whatever sponsors they wanted when they were able to fight. You guys can find this full lawsuit online, but there's definitely some notable stuff in it. For example, here it says, Zoof required its fighters to sign exclusive contracts that prevented them from competing with other promotions, even pointing out some of their more ridiculous rules. Like, for example, they pointed out that if a fighter became a title holding champion at any point during the term of the contract, the champion's clause allows Zufa to automatically extend the contract for one year or three bouts, which is kind of what we saw in the Francis Ngannou situation. I don't believe it was a year or three bouts, but if you guys recall, he had to wait a year or one fight, I think it was. This is like a staple in the UFC's business, right? Like, this is what they still do to this day. And if this lawsuit had gone all the way, if it had gone to trial, which it still has not yet gone to trial, of course, they're going back with settlements. But if it did go to trial and it did end in a trial, this could be a lot of trouble for the UFC. For one, they would most likely have to pay nearly multi-billion dollars in this case, as well as have major reform in fighter pay and their overall structure. And this could include changing fighter pay or overall revenue sharing, or maybe even little things like how the UFC has exclusive contracts with venues. But a lot of people like myself were curious, like, what happens if this goes all the way to trial? Like, will the UFC have to change literally how they run their company? Like, will this make the UFC fall off? Like, because let's be honest, a lot of these practices have what made the UFC as big as it is. The reason we get the fights we want is because they lock these fighters in the contract and they don't have much say on what they want to do. They don't have much say on who they want to fight. Like if Conor McGregor was Canelo and he was a boxer, he would be able to fight whoever he wants whenever. But Conor McGregor is constantly at odds with the UFC of when he wants to fight, who he wants to fight. But in July of 2024, we had some massive news revolving this case and it was announced that the UFC would have to pay $335 million, which I know to people like me and you seem like a lot of money, but seeing that the UFC was estimated to have costed $1.4 billion of damages, that is a massive W for the company. And right when it seemed like the UFC was gonna get away with this and yeah, have to just pay that little amount, the judge Richard Bolware decided no, that this settlement was not good. He said that the settlement was basically a joke, literally questioning why the fighters would ever agree to this, saying like, you would definitely get more if this thing went to court and said that what the UFC has done could have potentially cost $4.4 billion in damages, which if you guys recall was like triple the original estimate. And the judge said, look, you guys gotta figure something out, go back and come up with a new settlement because this is just not gonna suffice. And we were left with that for a few months until today, as of September 2024, a new amount has been released. And hold on, folks, because it is a whopping $375 million. That's right, only $40 million more when we're talking about $4.4 billion in damages. So I'm curious to see, does the judge accept this, right? Because we're gonna find out in February 2025. Now, Dana White hasn't really talked about this much. However, he did talk about it a couple weeks ago, kind of making a weird implication about the judge. Let me say this. It's probably the only thing I've said since this whole thing's been going on. It's getting to a point now where this feels personal. You know, I went to high school with this guy. With Judge Bowler? Yeah. Me and Lorenzo went to high school with him. I don't know what the hell me or Lorenzo did to him in high school, but uh, this seems very, very personal. Yeah, as you guys can see, Dana White is saying apparently that this is personal, that the judge has some sort of personal vendetta against him, that they went to high school together. Like, I don't know if Dana White, like, threw him in a trash can or something like that, or, you know, gave him swirlies in high school. But regardless, objectively speaking, I do love the UFC, and of course, like, I make videos about the UFC. But I think we can all agree, and I think even the UFC can agree to a certain extent that fighter pay, it needs to be reworked, right? It's a system that is broken. Personally, I would have a lot less problems and complaints with fighter pay if they would simply bring back 
back sponsors. Let fighters walk out with at least one to two sponsors, and the fighters can make a lot of money, especially with how big the UFC is now. And most of all, the UFC doesn't even have to pay extra. Leave a like on this video if you think that the UFC should pay more in this settlement. Also, check out the Discord in the link in the description. We're going to be talking about UFC Paris there. And if you want to see more about the UFC ripping people off, check out my last video where I talked about UFC 309's tickets with John Jones being way too high, as well as Sean O'Malley crying about a robbery and just being overall delusional. Thank you guys for watching. You guys are the best fan base in MMA. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.